Hello. What I'm going to do today is look at the water cycle, the water insecurity topic. I'm right at the beginning of it. So we're starting with 5.1a. So if we just click on that sheet, this is part of the topic which looks at the processes operating in the hydrological cycle from a global scale to a local scale. And this particular bit is all about the global system. So like we've got here, the global hydrological cycles operation as a closed system. So the first bit we've got to be really clear on is what a system is. And then once we've established that, what makes a system closed as opposed to an open system. And this system is driven where its energy comes from, if you like, by solar energy and gravitational potential energy. So solar energy from the sun driving things like evaporation. And then we have the gravitational energy, which ensures the water flows back downhill to the sea. Just like if you raise a book in altitude, then let go, it falls to the ground. So you're converting gravitational potential energy when it was raised to kinetic energy. And that's pretty much how the water cycle works. You increase the altitude of water, it rains, and then that flows back downhill to the sea or ocean. If we look at this ex type of exam question you might face, this is from the Frost textbook, explain why the global hydrological system is an example of a closed system. What you'd have to do with this is look at why it's seen as both a system in the first place and why it's closed. A lot of people miss the system part out of this and just talk about the closed part. And then we've got to think about how this is, is closed within the hydrological setting and try and exemplify this with some flows and stores, which is what we're, we're going to look at now. So a system approach. Like the spec says, all life depends on water, pretty much. The, uh, the section starts off with a global hydrological cycle, which we said, and then that moves to small hydrological systems. And this bit could be part of your field work eventually. Now, the global system is closed, whereas the local hydrological systems are open, and we need to establish the difference. So to be clear, a system is connected components that create a working whole. Your body is a system. So they have inputs, so you eat. We have processes and fluxes and flows. So this is moving energy from one part of the system to the other. But in terms of hydrology, that's moving water from one store to another. And that's called a flux. So you may move water from the ocean store, evaporate it, and it might be moved to the atmos atmosphere and stored in the atmosphere. And outputs are where uh, mat uh, matter is lost to the system. So a glacier, which we've done before, snow would be an input, a flow would be a basal slip, output would be meltwater. So we've got a system approach. If you increase the inputs and everything else stays the same, the glacier's got to get bigger. But as we know, a glacier tends to adjust and the outputs increase too until you get that dynamic equilibrium, which we've done before. Anyway, back to water. Closed system. Like it says here, it occurs when there is a transfer of energy, but no matter between the system and its surroundings. The inputs of matter come from within the system. Or to put that in a simpler way, there's no inputs and outputs of matter to the system. So the globe does not receive water from anywhere else, nor does it lose water. The water just moved around the system from store to store via the fluxes. However, it does have energy transfer in, which would be solar energy in this case. So there's a key thing there which people, people can get confused about. So there is a transfer of energy in and out, but not matter, or in this case, water. So solar energy comes in and out, but water, there's no, more, no inputs of water to the globe, but no outputs. Whereas an open system, as it says there, it sees inputs from and transfers and outputs of energy and matter 
to other systems. So in other words, an open system receives matter from other systems. So a local drainage basin will receive water from other places. So rainfall may come from a from the ocean. So it has inputs and then outputs. Um, the river may remove water from that system as well. So closed system, no inputs, no outputs. So if you imagine the globe in space, there's no water. In, we're not increasing how much water there is. There's no input of water, but nor is there any outputs. Whereas the open system, a local um, drainage basin, it will have inputs of water from elsewhere, and it will also lose water to elsewhere. But both have energy coming in and out too. So a hydrological system is all driven by solar energy. So the globe receives solar energy. So that's the energy transfer in. And that drives things like evaporation, transpiration, which is where plants release water via the stomata in the leaves. It also drives the wind and gravity. Glaciers and rivers and all water will move downhill. The higher it is, the greater gravitational potential energy it has. So if you think about the globe, this has flows, which we call fluxes and stores. But the closed, and this is why it's in bold, we've got to be really clear about that. The closed global hydrological system simply moves water from one store to another via the different fluxes. So if one store increases in size, then another one must be reduced. Now you might want to think about that and make sure you're really clear about that. Because if there's no inputs and no outputs, if you increase one area or one store of water, that's got to come from somewhere else. So the size of the stores are driven by the fluxes. And each store and flux is going to have a knock-on effect on the others. So for example, infiltration, where water sinks into the soil moisture storage or sinks into the ground, moves water from the store surface storage to soil moisture storage. So if you, if you reduce the uh, surface storage, the soil moisture storage might increase to compensate because we've got no movement of matter out of the system. So any change in one store has got to impact on another so that they're all linked together. An open system is a little bit different because it still moves water between the stores, but it, but it also has inputs and outputs. So an input to a local system might be precipitation and an output might be evaporation. But the globe doesn't have an input, but a local place does. So if you think about it, the globe, we don't have rain from elsewhere entering the global system, but a local system does. Now, you might want to have a look at our hydro global hydrological system using your textbooks. Now, there are two textbooks. The Frost textbook and the uh, Dunn textbook both have a good diagram. This is the Frost textbook. If I just zoom in on it, using numbers for any of these textbooks approved by your examining board are fine and they'll be listed for the examiners when they're marking your papers. So what we can see here is the global hydrological cycle. There's a diagram and we've got estimates of the main water stores. And when you read different textbooks, they might vary slightly, but they're not very, they're not too far out because they are estimates. And they're given in 10 to the 3 kilometers cubed volume. The black type, as in the font, this is, these are the, st the stores. Then the fluxes are given at exactly the same measurements, but it's per year, and they're blue. So evaporation is a flux, but the ocean is a store. So if you increase evaporation and everything else stayed, well, everything else couldn't stay the same, it, you would have to either increase the atmospheric storage by reducing the ocean storage, or it might increase the runoff. But if you think about it, if, if the um, evap if evaporation, ocean evaporation increased, it would take more water into the atmosphere. That may well create more rainfall which then might create more flow, um, surface flow back to the ocean. So it will balance it out. Or if the rain fell and got trapped as ice, the ocean store would decrease slightly and the cryosphere storage would increase. 
So what we're saying is when you change one, you change it, you change something else. So if you, what you need to start thinking about is if you change one of those factors on that diagram, what will the knock on effects be? And remember, this is a globe, so it's not we're not looking at one particular place. So you, you can't there's no input from elsewhere. So any change in one store has got to change another. The uh, Hodder textbook has a similar diagram, which is here, which is shown exactly the same way, just showing the different moves, different flows. You will need to learn them. You must know all these stores and flows. If you go back to the spec, uh, not, so the um, the contents page on the on, when we get to 5.1b, it wants you to look at all these different stores in more detail and the different fluxes. So. It's really clear then, we've got to be absolutely certain and got it clear in our head that the global system, hydrological system is closed. And that means that if you increase the store or change a flux in one part of it, it's got to have a knock on effect on the others. There's two additional key terms that I just want you to be aware of. Blue water is the vis visible part of the hydrological cycle, like rain, green water, water stored in soils and vegetation and so on just in case you come across those terms right what this next bit does is, is um, looks at um, trying to reinforce this idea of the links now this is a this is Australia's national water balance and there's a few questions at the bottom just to get you thinking so P is precipitation Q is runoff so that's water running over the surface E is evaporation, and this triangle with an S, that's changing stores, either up or down. So we've got change. So what we need to think about is when we look at these figures, I want you to think about the questions. And also, is Australia secure in its water supply? So the first thing to consider is, is this an open or a closed system? From what we've already said, you should be able to work that out. If you can't, then you need to go back and look at what an open and closed system is and the definitions. Then see if you can work out using that equation, what's happening to this water balance over time? What stores are likely to change over the short term or even perhaps the long term? And what problems might Australia face in the future? So this is just to get you thinking about a system and get you to re get really to reinforce the ideas we've said. It's not something you need to memorize. It's just something you could use to reinforce the ideas above. Okay, that's uh, 5.1a complete.